Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be solving the leak code question increasing order search tree. Alright, so in this question, given the root of a binary search tree, rearrange the tree in, in order so that the leftmost node in the tree is now the root of the tree and every node has no left child and only one right child. Okay, perfect. So over here we're going to be given a BST or a binary search tree. So what exactly is a binary search tree? So a binary uh, search tree is a tree-based data structure and how it works is given a certain root, everything to the left of the root is going to be less than where the root's value is and everything to the right of the root is going to be greater than where the root's value is. So in this case, we have five. So everything to the right of five, so six, eight, seven, and nine are all greater than five and everything to the left of it are smaller than it. So you can also see that on a smaller level. So for example, if we just look at three, uh, to the right of three, we have four. So four is greater than three. And to the left of three, we have two and one, which again are smaller than three. So that's how a BST works. And what we basically want to do is we want to convert this binary search tree into something which looks like this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So basically over here, uh, you're taking a BST and converting it into uh, something like which goes from the least to the highest uh, value, right? So there's two different ways that you can look about for solving this question. So one thing that we could do is we could first traverse through this fully and after traversing through it, we could store it in some sort of list, okay? So this over here is going to contain all of the values of the nodes, okay? So this is the values of our nodes. And after doing that, we're going to store it in some sort of list. And then what we would do is we would construct a completely new uh, tree, which is what we're going to end up outputting. So that's one way to solve this question. So let's just see how that looks like, but that's not going to be our final answer. So the kind of uh, traversal that we're going to be doing is going to be an in-order traversal. So how an in-order traversal works is that we first go to the leftmost node, then we go to the root node, and then we go to the rightmost node. How exactly does that work? So in the beginning, we're gonna to go to the leftmost node, which is one. So then we're gonna add one to our traversal. And the reason that makes sense is because the leftmost node is always going to be the smallest node. And that's why we're adding it first. Then we're gonna to go to the root, which in this case is two. Then we're gonna append that. And then we're gonna check if there's anything to the right of it, which there isn't, so we don't care, uh, worry about it. Okay, similarly, now we're gonna to go to three. Uh, and uh, the reason we're going to three is because we got its left children, which are two and one. So now we're going to append three, and now we're going to go to the right of three, which is four. Now we're going to append that, and now we got everything to the left of five. So now we're going to add five, and now we're going to do the same thing, but for the right part of five. So that's how an in-order traversal works, and by the ending of this, what's going to happen is we're going to get all the values in ascending order, and then all we need to do is using those values, you want to create a completely new tree data structure, right? So that is one way to do it. Okay, so now our other approach to do this is going to be pretty similar, but the only thing that we're going to kind of change is that instead of uh, creating a completely new tree data structure, right? So first we're iterating through everything, and then we're creating a new data structure, or sorry, new tree again, and then returning that. And so doing that, we want to do it at the same time. So basically the main idea that what's going to happen is we want to go to the smallest node first. So this over here is going to be our root node, which is one. Now what's going to happen is the next step is the one would end up pointing to two. Okay, so one would be pointing to two. In other words, two would be the right child of one. Now after two, two is going to point to three. So three is going to be the right child of two. But what happens once we reach three? There's stuff to the right of it, right? So in this case, what's going to happen is after we go to three, since there is uh, there are values on the right of it, we're going to search to the right over here and we're going to go to the smallest value. But in this case, there is only one value. So what we're going to end up doing is the three over here is going to be pointing to four. So four is the right child of three. Now, after that, we're going to have five. So four goes to five and so on and so forth. Right. So the five would go to six. Uh, but yeah, that's the basic idea and uh, let's just try to uh, make it more uh, by step like so Let's just go through one iteration and then the rest we'll just do during the code because I don't think it's too hard So in the beginning our goal is to find the uh, leftmost value since that is going to be the smallest So how do we do that and while sorry while we're doing that what we're gonna do is we're gonna store the values we come across so we're gonna store five 
then its left is 3, its left is 2, and its left is finally 1. After that, we don't have any value. So what we're going to do is in the beginning, we're going to start off with an empty dummy node, right? So this is just going to act as a dummy. And the only purpose for it is so that uh, we can have values uh, that this is pointing to. And afterwards, we're just going to point to whatever is to the right of this, okay? That's going to be the starting. So now what's going to happen, the dummy is going to point to whatever we pop out over here. So in this case, we're going to pop out this value, which is 1. And the dummy node is going to point to 1. So the right child of the dummy node is going to be 1. So now what we're going to end up doing is, uh, since we looked at the left of 1, we're going to check its right. But in this case, there's nothing to the right of 1. So we're going to keep going and we're going to look at our stack. Okay, so let's see what happens. And now what's going to happen is we were currently over here, but now we're currently going to be over here. All right, so now we're going to pop out the next value, which is 2. So now when we pop out 2, we're going to go over here at 2. And now we're going to search everything to the right of 2. And there is nothing to the right of 2, so in that case directly, uh, 1 is going to be pointing to 2. By pointing, I just mean that 2 is going to be the right child of 1. Okay, so now we're currently going to be over here. Now, uh, again, there's nothing to the right of 2, so we don't need to explore anything there. So we're going to pop out this value over here. So we're at 3, so we're going to go to 3. Uh, 2 is going to point to 3. And since there is something to the right of 3, we're going to search over there, right? And basically, all we're going to be doing is we want to find the smallest value over here. But we actually don't have any smallest value there. But I mean, there is only one value there, right? So um, in that case, we're just going to append that over here. So we're going to append 4. And we're just going to continue on, right? So now we have 4 over here. So now what's going to happen is we're going to pop out the 4. And we're going to add it. So in other words, 4 is going to be the right child of 3. OK, now what happens, right? So what is the right of 4? Nothing. So in that case, we're going to stop. But there still is a value in our tree, sorry, in our stack. So we're going to pop this value out finally, which is the value 5. So when you go to 5, the 4 over here is going to be pointing to 5. 5 is going to be the right child of 4. But what happens once you get to the 5? So this basically means that we've searched everything to the left of it. And we have, right? So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. We already went through everything less than 5. Now we want to just search everything on the right of 5. So to do that, again, the steps are going to be completely the same. The first thing from, so we're only going to be focusing on this part of our tree and we want to find the leftmost element. So in this case, the leftmost value is just going to be six because six is not pointing anything to the left of it, right? So six is going to be the smallest in this area over here. So we're going to append that to our stack. So now what's going to happen is actually, let me just remove the box over here. So we're going to have six here. So now let's remove the five. And uh, now we're going to pop out the 6, so pop it out. And in this case, the 5 is now going to be pointing to 6. Okay, perfect. So now we want to check, is there anything to the right of 6? There is. So in that case, we're going to add 6 again to... So in that case, what we want to do is we want to search everything over here, right? So there are values to the right of 6, so we want to just explore this space over here. So over here, we're going to first go to 8. So we're going to append 8 over here. After 8, we're going to check, is there anything to the left of it? So there is uh, something to the left of it, which is the number 7. So now we're going to append 7 over here. Is there anything to the left of 7? Well, there isn't, so we're going to be done. Okay, so now let's just do this real quickly. So we're going to pop out this value, which is 7. So we pop out 7. And now what's going to happen is the 6 is going to be pointing to 7. And that makes sense, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 7. So that is the correct thing that we are doing. 6 is pointing to 7. So now we're over here. And now we want to check, is there anything to the right of 7? Well, there isn't, so we don't want to worry about that. So now we go to our stack again. We're going to pop out 8. So 7 is going to be pointing to 8. And now at 8, do we check? So is there anything to the right of 8? There is. Now we want to come, uh, go over here. And there's only one value, so let's just directly add that to our stack which is 9. Now finally, we're going to pop out 9. So we popped out 9, and now 8 points to 9. Okay, so finally, after we go to 9, we want to check, is there anything to the right of 9? There isn't. And uh, there is our stack is also empty. There's nothing in our stack. So that means that we have reached the ending, and this is the correct answer, right? So this over here is our dummy node. So what exactly are we going to return? So we're going to return whatever is to the right of our dummy node 
which in this case is going to be 1. So we're going to be returning 1, which is our root node. So 1 points to 2, 2 points to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6, 6 to 7, 7 to 8, 8 to 9. All right, so hopefully you understood this. I know I spent quite a bit of time, but now let's see how we can solve this question. So all we're doing in our code is we're just uh, kind of doing what I went through in our diagram, right? So let's just do that. It's pretty simple. So first, let's just check if we actually have a root. So if we don't have a root, we're directly just going to end up returning none. All right, perfect. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to create our dummy node. So to do that, we're going to be using the tree node class, which is defined over here and we're going to create an instance of it. So we're going to have an object and let's just call this object over here dummy node. Okay, so dummy is going to be equal to this. But we're going to have one more variable storing the same value. And the reason we're using this another variable is because uh, this is going to be the current. Uh, okay. So let's just call this variable current. And the reason we need it is because each time. So as you can see here, first current had this value over here then current was over here, then over here, and so on and so forth, okay? So currently, uh, this is what we have, and we're also going to have a stack to store the node values that we ended up having. Okay, so over here, we have a condition, so while, and the condition for entering this while loop is while stack or root. So what does that mean? So the root value over here in the beginning is we want to check if it's, uh, if we actually have a value or not. And in the beginning, uh, we're already checking it over here, so it doesn't really matter. But what actually ends up happening over here is each time we go to the root, like I showed you earlier, is we're going to search if a current node has a value to the right of it. So in this case, uh, what is to the right of 1? So to the right of 1, we have a value of none, right? So in that case, uh, the root would have a value of none at that point. Okay, so over here, what we're going to do is we want to add everything to the left of a certain root, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to do while root, and each time we're going to be appending that value to our root. So in the beginning, what we did is we added 5, 3, 2, 1, uh, and yeah, so we added 5, 3, 2, and 1. So each time, all we're doing is we're going to go root equals to root dot left. Each time, we're going to be going 1 to the left until we get the leftmost value, okay? And we're going to add that to our stack each time. So now what we're going to end up doing is we want to get the value of the root, okay? So now the root is going to have a value of whatever we pop out from our stack. So stack dot pop. Okay, perfect. So we popped out some value from our stack and this value over here is going to be added to our new tree over here. So current dot next is going to be equal, sorry, not, not dot next, sorry. Current dot right is going to be equal to whatever we popped out over here, which is nothing else but equal to root. Okay, so current dot right is equal to root. That's it. Okay, perfect. So, uh, so sorry, this is not really a new tree, but yeah, it's just a dummy node. That's what I meant to say. Okay, so now we're pointing that to the current root uh, or node that we are on, and now one more thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be moving our current pointer. So current is now going to be equal to current dot right. Okay. So in the beginning, it was at the dummy node, and now it's going to be at the first value that we actually have. Okay. So we moved our current uh, node, and simultaneously, we're also going to be searching for everything to the right of this root value. So root is now going to be equal to root dot right. And if there actually is something to the right of the root, uh, root, then in that case, we're going to go in this while statement and we're going to search everything inside of that root and append it to our stack. Okay, so that's what we're doing over here. And one last thing that we want to do just in case is uh, if we don't do this, we might actually end up with some sort of cycle inside of our tree. So what we want to do is we want to do current dot left equal to none. And this just ensures that we don't have any cycles inside of our tree. Okay, and that should be it. So at the very ending, we want to return our dummy node. But to be more specific, the first node is just an empty node. We want to return whatever is dummy dot right. That is going to be the root node, and that is what we're going to end up returning. So let's submit this, and it should get accepted. Okay, so for the solution, uh, the time complexity over here is going to be big O of n, where n is the number of nodes in the given tree. And finally, the space complexity is going to be big O of h, where h over here refers 
to the height of a given tree. Alright, so yeah, thanks a lot for watching guys, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you! Thank you.